everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Universe Within podcast. On this episode, I sat down with Dr. David Jubb. Uh, Dr. Jubb was really one of my first teachers on this path of beginning to work with plants. I met Dr. Jubb um, at his restaurant and cafe in New York City. It was uh, quite close to where I was living in the time in the, the Lower East Side, the the East Village of Manhattan, <clears throat> and I was very fascinated by him. Um, he, I think, truly is a a genius, a, a visionary. Um, I, I remember being very intrigued just by many of the things he would say. He would have uh, kind of classes every week in his cafe, and I would go there with a, a good buddy of mine, uh, who I also interviewed on this podcast, whose name is uh, John Keegan. And there was something about Dr. Jubb, that environment, the people there, that was very fascinating. And it really began to open me to this world of, of plant medicine. Uh, he was very much focusing on food as medicine, the, the life force of food, the life energy, the vitality, uh, the, the healing, the nutritive aspects. Um, and, and also this idea, I think, of shamanism. And um, <clears throat> I remember many things that he said seemed uh, <laughs> quite strange at the time, uh, and yet many of those things many years later, uh, whereas at the time he was really the only person that I knew uh, speaking of those things, turned out to be true and, and really backed up by science. Uh, so I, I think he's very much a kind of a revolutionary and a visionary in that way. Um, also, the title of this podcast, The Universe Within, was very much based on uh, this show that he had, I, I think, on some local public access network, uh, cable network, which uh, I believe was called The Universe Within Our Mind. Uh, and it was very much the inspiration for the title of this podcast podcast, which is The Universe Within. Uh, so it was really an honor to have Dr. Jubb on. <clears throat> this conversation is a bit different. Um, there was no video uh, with this uh, uh, interview, and um, it kind of isn't a normal podcast or interview in the sense of a Q&A, but it's more, I think, of a stream of consciousness, of, of really just allowing Dr. Jubb to speak about different things that was on his mind. I, I kind of led the conversation, but it's really, uh, I, I think, kind of just a, a free flow form into the mind of, a, a, I think, as I said, a, a pretty incredible human being. So uh, it's not super linear. Um, you, you may even have to listen to it a, a number of times, uh, I think, to really be able to absorb a, a lot of the information he's speaking about. But we got into some really interesting topics about uh, whole brain functioning or, or whole brain patterning, uh, about consciousness, about the mind, about plants, um, about government, about media, corporations, uh, um, and, and really just, I would say more than anything, this idea of consciousness and, and the mind, and also very much so the, the power of language um, and how that can really affect our our consciousness, our worldview, um, the universe that is inside of us. Uh, so it was a very fascinating conversation. Um, like I said, it may take you a, a few times to get through it, but there's a, there's a lot of information in there and a lot of gems if you have the, the kind of patience and uh, an ability to, to really listen to what he's saying. So um, I hope you enjoy this conversation. Um, as always, if you're able to support this podcast, that's a really big help to me. Patreon is a really good option. It's a website. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month. There's different tiers you can sign up for. Those tiers give you different things back, things like early access to shows, bonus materials, Q&As. To all of the patrons, to all of the people supporting that way, as always, uh, I thank you very much for your support. It's really what allows me to continue uh, doing this podcast. Uh, and if you're able to do that, uh, thank you very much in advance. What I really like about that website is this idea of reciprocity. Uh, so if you feel like you're gaining something from this podcast, uh, it's a beautiful opportunity to be able to, to give back and also to receive uh, some additional things as well. Um, if you're not able to do that, as always, helping with the algorithms uh, really helps to get the show out to a bigger audience. So if you're viewing this on YouTube or Rumble, subscribing to the show, turning on the notification bell, liking the video, um, leaving any questions or comments in the comments section, all those things really help. And if you're listening to the show on Apple 
Podcast or Spotify, uh, subscribing or following, and also with Apple Podcasts, leaving a starred rating and a short review is a really big help. So I think that's it. Without further ado, here is my conversation with Dr. David Chelman. from the maze. Running out from the maze, running out of the maze today. Running out from the maze, running out from the maze, running out from the maze today. Running out from the maze, running out from the maze, running out of the maze today. Someone has achieved excellence as they uh, have no need inside. Um, yeah, so um, that's one thing, of course. Um, we can experience moments of this where heaven, of course, is defined as the uh, space between two children playing. And so it's it's a state of being um, and um, on earth here as heaven is. Um, and my work... Um, really uh, academically, or you could say scientifically, was looking into how whole brain patterning ex- is existing um, and how does someone maintain this. And so there's a couple of books that sort of about this, which is about your identity, basically. Um, and you, and, and uh, there's a book which is a synopsis, and it's about a 14-day training, but it's really a synopsis of that whole training and that training that says training is really about your identity meaning like your identity is pristine and has an empty center and simply care wrapped around this and that's your identity so identity has been mistaken hasn't it for like um attitude or behavior or capabilities or what somebody could do or their environment or their family all of those very things sort of um, and political views and things um, have uh, come to sort of take the place of identity. And so, um, yeah, uh, my work is a lot about more the master of self. Um, and it's great, like, you introduced this topic because it's the induction and there's a whole range of mediums, like you mentioned, and those are mediums. And uh, something which what this is is direct um, and though... There could be secondary ways to get something like somebody um, are, is able to just to experience a candle, um, a soft candle flame or a beautiful soft warm glow, you know, from a, a pink salt lamp or something. Um, and uh, these things are more, as you're accessing a resource state and you have interest, you're accessing your frontal cortex and you've got access to your executive guidance um, and um, you, you've got really whole brain patterning. And then, um, yeah, the very thing that goes on where somebody's a child more where that kind of not being kept would be to do with how did somebody handle rejection, for instance. Um, and the, the uh, somebody who's really excellent, really, in the world and are really good in social, um, they really are very good at managing rejection versus people could have a great sensitivity to to uh, rejection, yes, and managing rejection as a pattern in life relatively. So that's only just a small example. Um, but, um, yeah, um, you could see these things sort of going on, can't you, mate? You know? um, some, and then um, leadership really is a great capacity to be able to consider one's own um, cognitive processing <laughs> um, because one knows one not is one isn't that whatsoever. But as you're listening, um, you could say um, that where we're listening is, of course, um, every anyone who's speaking they're really focused on the listening, aren't they? And uh, good, good, good speakers. And the listening is. Um, you're always getting a sense of receptivity to what's said. And the, the now we're starting to talk more about inductive process, you know, and what's said that then um, could have an effect. Um, so um, someone could have um, just blown a balloon up, let's say, like, um, and popped it, and someone um, had a uh, breakthrough experience because it was just a reframe. It was like a pop reframe. 
as a technique. Um, something that was being processed um, was, um, and it was just processed with some other act that was going on, and it was um, it was combined with what that was. And um, so, you know, there's synesthesia which is going on with you and I and anyone is in life, um, and the pen is mightier than the sword, meaning that everyone really is is under an agentic state, and the point of anyone's good good life and good service is um, being able to help educate people like what you are, um, and give people opportunity to have breakthrough experience, and basic is to have knowledge more of quiet in the mind, and. It isn't an experience or a memory, but a way of going about doing things more. And so one slowly but surely using whole brain patterning and skill can chip away at things so that, you know, um, one's really effective far more with what you're doing and you really feel quite adequate and you're looking at what might need to be more adequate, but it's all to do with adequacy. And it's so how did you... Or anybody look at it if you look at a subject as resourceful, or do we go, uh oh, this is problematic, or whatever? But how someone's handled rejection, but also, too, like if you've grown up in a world where you've you've been taught people are basically good, okay, well, you know, um, you're really courageous, you could be going and living somewhere else, like in Peru, like where you are, or whatever, um, and you're really courageous, whereas a lot of people are kind of really a bit frozen, a bit stuck. Also, you notice that they can have not ease of ability to be really resourceful around rejection and things just like this. So those are skills which really is able to teach and um, model um, and that then cause the world around us to ever be more able to uh, be evaluative more and remain more in a process of resource, of course, and things. Because it could be someone mm-hmm. that can be aware of their embedded commands, which that's really great. So, like, let's say somebody says, try not right now to really have a lot of fun with this um, topic of, you know, your embedded commands. So it really is about that, whatever. So because um, there's no such thing as negation at a primary level of experience. Um, and as is possible for anybody to be automatically resourceful and in a really great resource state, um, it, it, it's beautiful because it's uncontrolled um, and you could manage rejection really perfectly um, versus, um, you know, all of it starting to be honest to God, being controlled where someone is no longer able to be remained associated and congruent and integrated, which these are all um, behaviours and um, epistemology, like being integrated, being congruent, and, and being associated, those are things which really someone could learn more. Um, but it's describing you know anybody who's really good at being able to draw things into their first attention really well. Um, but um, being receptive, really things have gone on which causes the mind to have far more quiet. But as somebody could sort of hear things um, today, um, that could help clear things up incredibly. Like for instance, just our topic about how good are you which you're really fantastic at managing rejection and um, people who are good at that, they, they make good leaders um, why? Because they don't get caught up with a, with a mosquito bite or something you know what I mean? Um, but most mm. of us really um, really aren't really in there driving the bus at the front and are way down the back of the bus and just being driven around but Everybody is under an agentic state and you're shifting more into this state of obedience as you're focused more on unity consciousness and looking at news and things around the world and being able to 
I totally see all things from unity consciousness and versus quotes and logos. And you can see um, news and things that really, um, really is just only the cause of fright, flight, fright, and fear. Um, and one can be over the top of what that is because that's not you. Uh, but you can see just the very things that's going on more like a visitor. And you could be visiting anything, matter of fact, and actually just simply discharging the charges and correcting things. And this is really the fourth estate. This is really plasma. This is really more, um, you know, a fifth dimensional structure which causes plasma to be more directed within yourself or anybody else. And you and I, we have a map, uh, apart from all this, which is we build inside and you and I, we've got various things we do to build that map because we generalize, we we have to delete a lot of information, we have to construct things. These are very um, important uh, processes where you and I and anyone is just going, yeah, happening automatically. I um, mean, how is that really being applied and is the map that you've ended up with or someone else the richest map that you can um, and um, it's just moments of being able to be in nature and then be realized that first we're plant based um, as being we have an ex- we have a relationship with trees and we and that were, and the trees have a relationship with the earth because it provides of course many other things including shade which causes water to have its levity um, and when we consume foodstuffs which has prion material in it meaning it's an indigestible analog of a protein it could be missing a bit of nitrogen or it could be having nitrogen but still um, it's like an analog of protein um, and it causes spike proteins to be present which which is basically pneumonia and and the cackle and what everybody gets when they die okay um, and um, but how did someone breathe through their nose which they did because something suddenly caused them to realize oh my god I need to breathe through my nose you know through my sleep and I need, why shouldn't I be really nice and straight and feel really good? And I have a great capacity just to turn uh, the continuity off between memory. And so you're really more, your mind is more asleep. I mean, you'd be surprised you're more in an inductive state to be able to recall this information afterward. And, and really, um, I have a powerful resource state which really is able for you to collapse any stuck state into it. Um, and you'd be able to sort what the resource state is behind any rejected condition, and you're looking at it as to what the resource state is instead. And so you're looking at things very differently. And so where memory and experience is ongoing, stored more as a visitor does, nothing is really sticking there except for the things which is positive and active, which is ethical as an outcome. Um, because you're just really stoic in the manner of being and just looking at what the ethic is as an outcome. Uh, and rejection really would have contributed to feelings of inadequacy, wouldn't it? I mean, you could see that for sure, okay. But that makes sense. Um, and that wherever fear of rejection was, it always would have caused any anyone to have led themselves to avoiding contact. Isn't that right? Now, many people come to you and one could um, be moved through a fire walk or somebody just simply knows how to do anchoring as a shaman does and can get parts isolated and can can um, create a synesthesia so that that part then becomes integrated more um, and so you're becoming more one again. And so many of us go through life and we could see ourselves like, we were one, oh yeah, I mean, that's our original self, good. And then something came along, we became two, maybe we become three, and over a moment of some days, you can see all of those parts all coming back more into one, you see. And so it's really anticipating um, an emptiness, which as someone has achieved this bliss flows, you have endogenous opiates, beta endorphins, encephalins, you've got serotonin, dopamine, um, you've got all these things, and this is your brain functioning and being more on fire and being relaxed and empty and ready like stealth. You know, you know. But if one didn't do that and they didn't anticipate that um, you're assuming excellence where you are, but you anticipated ever more rejection, let's say, where somebody was 
Um, and that could be turned around because somebody could just become aware that they've been doing that. Well, that's just not a good thing. A lot of, a lot of people didn't connect or wouldn't because they felt that there was some rejection. And what sensitivity do you or anybody have, you know, in yourself is really your capacity about to cope really well, far more, and really be able to really do good with grief, which is the integration of loss. This is the most uh, fantastic emotion, honestly. Every single emotion is intelligence, just not getting stuck somewhere, but the collective transient perception, which is in reality, that could all have been shaped, you see. And then if the news and everything anybody ever thought and put was as a mass um, collective punishment was going on, um, and it was done not by people except a system that was over the top of it all, and that was the real common enemy. And the common enemy is you and I, our b- ability to be in this fourth estate, which is above all corporation, you see, in government, and to protect and help government. And and government only for, is because this fourth estate is existing, um, and, and this is higher and well above any corporation itself. It's we the people. And you only need 26 people um, to sit together and they can create everything that's needed, um, which is above the corporation. So somebody should really sort of be looking into that. But ongoing, of course, you're really good at being able to manage rejection. Why? Well, because it makes common sense and common feeling and all of us enjoy it where someone has the ability to be able to manage that. And most people kind of feel a little bit, Nervous <laughs> around anybody who's sort of feeling inadequate, don't, and they don't do good on stage, really. Except if you're really acting out inadequacy, and then people think that's funny as hell. Um, yeah, because you, you you're really doing it on purpose, sort of thing. But somebody's really learning, um, and this is the coyote, um, which means this down where you are, and all the way up to Canada, um, the same word. So fit. Fear um, would have really of rejection. I think the topic is a bit of been about because it really does lead to wherever you are, where you've ever experienced anybody avoiding your contact and stuff. It is because they can have some some sensitivity, um, and they could clear that up, and you could assist and help clear that up by and anticipating ever more resource state ongoing. So familiarity is, and you'd say. Um, uh, alienation that's ch- child alienation and parental alienation is examples of this where familiarity of things isn't and doesn't exist um, but what happens is this is something ongoing that you where something was missing now you have to have become the most yourself um, and that grief really is this uh, Ability to be able to look at what's lost and, and find integration where things are, and a collective perception of reality more rather than a transient one of rejection. Um, and um, if anybody could see, like um, uh, people in Gaza, for instance, ongoing at the moment in the world, which is an example of people getting collectively punished, um, but where anybody could see that a lot of things that are existing there aren't really of any ethic too much, um, but we could be living more in a world of ethics that you and I are in this fourth estate and you know that this is above the legislative assembly where you are um, and it's under the Magna Carta, you see? So it should be wise where someone's grown up and they've basically 
growing up in an environment that says, oh, people are basically good. And they've got great comforting skills inside birds of somebody who was told, hey, you know, people out there are pretty bad and watch out. <laughs> um, now, we don't mm. question any of those things as to how we've gone about anything, but definite is for sure that iatrogenic genocide has gone on. And um, why, don't we, why wouldn't we know that? Um, of course, it's the major cause of death. Is a medical intervention and you know, and everything around it. It really is the major cause of death. And wouldn't we want to be able to look at these things? But we would and can you and I, all of us in the fourth estate. And this is fourth estate is what's above uh, gubernation, governing and control, um, and corporation itself, which is really dead. Um, so it's not right, of course, that you. All of us are living with a corpse above ourselves, and we've got an ID that only gives you no natural right as a title, as a man, as a woman, and um, and so as a son of a purr, or as a drive whore, or as a travel whore, or whatever. Um, but that's not you as your title, as a man, as a woman, and um, rights only flow from your title. And wherever most, of course, it's sort of a bit. Um, suspicious maybe to people and wonder what the hell's going on but there's a criminal banking cartel of one world order of course which really all throughout history has has used um, felt hostility has used dejective types of conditioning has used withdrawal and jealousy and rejecter and has done all of that or sort of on purpose it's just if you rise above it you look and you can see it you can don't have to be part of that anymore. But you can only then see afterward, like, well, that's a really crying out for love um, or it's a giving of love, but that's certain crying out for love. But you can only interpret things in a couple of ways because it would be wrong for anybody to punish anybody. That wouldn't be right. It's just you've got to really uh, see what's going on overall. And this is this new era. This is this new epoch. I mean, when your lips move, they're no longer lying, you see, because it really is about a reset and it's get rid of negative economic inductance and jump on positive economic inductance forever. Because why shouldn't it be everybody compensated that the charge of genocide that goes on is discharged, of course, now everybody's got an account. And for the next 210 years, everybody lives, lives in harmony and peace. And so we should, of course, you see. So where somebody really is good, of course, and they differ in their sensitivity, um, they're not really mind reading, um, because a lot of mind, a lot of, a lot of pain comes from people thinking what other people are thinking, but you can't do that. Uh, but if you knew 90% of most people's thinking was just trying to think about what other people are thinking, and if you drop that because you can't think what other people's thinking, suddenly 90% of a lot of the rejection that could have been going on kind of been just dropped clear away. So these are things which is really patterns ongoing, and this is a real meditation. It's ongoing and chipped away. It's not an experience um, where people are trying to give that to someone. They'll get booed off the stage, of course. <laughs> um, it's not a memory, which also somebody will get quick, smart, booed off the stage if they talk about things like that. Most people really could be better at public speaking because they really are able to master and not really have any more internal dialogue, you know, which could have been taking over where some of the was. But a lot of that internal dialogue, Jay, really is because people are just going and chatter, chatter, chatty, chatty catty about um, rejected um, by a sorts of reasoning of others or something. And it's a hell of a lot of mind reading. But if somebody realized that they've just dropped it, now you ask yourself, well, 10% of your own is your own thinking, and now you just focus, see, what's the resource state of it? And you've got a good resource state, great. And if you don't, then you've dropped it. And so it's just a very simple skill that somebody's done to be remain more in laughter, you know, which is your response where people are or comfort and playfulness um, versus a lack of all of that really. Um, but a, a good show of a deep sensitivity more um, behaviourally um, where you and I or anyone could perceive how others could feel rejection. It's a very, very important um, to be able to clear all of it up. And as you're able to 
talk a bit about it, it does get all cleared up. It's fantastic because now you're getting more skills to be able to evaluate things going on versus, uh uh-oh, I feel rejected, you feel rejected, people. It's like, what do they do? It's like better that we act and have a great receptivity to really be good at feeling rejected versus like crappy or whatever. How, how, what would be the, so you're going to be in your frontal cortex more. But if somebody's focused on what makes sense and what doesn't, then the sorting things out, you've got your own center basically rather than that center having been um, taken over really. avoid all of that physical pain in the brain well it really is a mental thing that all that pain is because when somebody like doesn't have any need they don't really have any pain and now what's left is bliss it's not being blissful that's a bit ridiculous but bliss is just simply being empty and having endogenous opiates having dopamine serotonin having these things um there's a really great discussion more for anybody interested in jump's little red book on eye awareness, and then there was another one on um, being able to verify your map. I um, mean, it's all about sort of get, being more sensory based with the things that you do cognitively or someone else. Um, but the universe is inside our mind, and it's a really good managing um, and all the technique that could be learned. But, but it all could you say, kind of in a nutshell. It really could be a lot to do with rejection. So when no is playful and you love it, when the word stop is so playful, you love it, you see, as a kid, and you have fun with it. But what would happen if stop is ah or don't is ah, you know, it's all been incorrectly processed. And then, wow. Lots of centers was just right there with rejection, just get, having been triggered in the past. And where others really are um, really poor at managing things, um, and all, all but, but you could be recognizing all these patterns and having pattern recognition. Otherwise, you know, you'll see, well, that's the reason why somebody could have had some anxiety ongoing where they were because they always had imprinted or got to something which was about their own rejection and imprinting of whatever was resourceful now and building a resource state, you can collapse all the stuck states into that. And so it really no longer is bothersome, no longer sort of really is anything of any matter. So we've just been talking about this fourth estate, which is plasma. Um, And um, you've got five states of matter, matter of fact, um, and most people are unaware, um, and that this fourth estate really is, is, is plasma itself, it's how you're thinking, um, and this fifth, fifth dimensional structure is a structure which organizes that plasma, and this is what we're talking about where we are here. Um, it's really uh, the uh, what's above all corporation which a corporation is dead. A corporation cannot hear, feel, or see you. And so saying words like um, Australia or America or something, um, it could could be something from the land, uh, but very fictional in relation to, you know, a tree or Ralph or Mary, um, which which, um, is is equal um, to each other there. But um, Ralph isn't equal to uh, uh, five or six other people who all together don't have a central organised nervous system. Um, and so we do all be, uh, are under common law, and uh, no matter what, and all contact exists because of it, and never could be broken because that's all the, only the world exists about. From it. And so it's the important circles are formed all over the earth more. Um, where you can consider what needs to be done. You, you get 26 people and um, you, you put your claim 
in, you know, and you, you just like form as a presentment, meaning you wonder, is there any government transgression going on? Um, because you have a power of seizure over the top of any corporation to help correct everything. Um, and you could keep in mind that it's really um, faith, honour and trust. But what happens when that's propagandised in text? What happens when some people could said, oh, we all the chosen ones and others aren't? Or it's propagandized, it's okay, of course, um, not to murder, but killing is okay or something. Um, I mean, that's really uh, uh, no use much of any force of state and government. Something gets printed or painted or written, but it's not of any trust, faith or honour and not unity conscious, it can be corrected. It should easily be corrected. Um, we just have to act and have more civic civic function versus sitting back and letting all that be. Um, but if you're more internally regulated, you, you're you going to be good. But if you're not, you're going to be externally controlled. Um, no government, really, department or court or media really... Um, one would say, has never been infiltrated. Um, you'd have to ask yourself the question, uh, don't you think it's possible that all these departments can have been infiltrated, especially if you've just got a criminal bank card of one world order that's over the top of all the corporations, which we've talked about. But it doesn't really mean that you and I, we, we shouldn't really be um, activated by what this is that we're talking about and even what this... Um, be engaged more in a natural presentment. And so you don't know if a bill exists, but then it returns and you say, yeah, there's government transgression because there's no contagion and there's no carbon, um, you know, um, stuff which, uh, uh, you know, we've been sold out on all that. And so, you know, um, somebody just asked a question and it came back, but we had the power to be able to do these things and we can help clean up the Pacific and you can stop war in 24 hours, okay? So really ancient, stirred up, um, unity conscious versus stirred up hatred, of course. What did somebody put in there? I mean, you've got non-kinetic weapons and people don't even, don't, this is not even being discussed, of course, you know, and you, and so, you know, people get, um, can get the Mau Maui due. Um, Far beyond um, what really is nuclear, those are weapons which don't need to be um, of ammunition, and they continuously just have got, you know, could be charged back up again. Um, and it's really from space um, that's applied, and that's the speed of light. And it's thousands of times the heat of the sun, just in a small spot, and that literally can heat um, metals and anything conductive and. It, it, it exploded to create a fire. Plasma, um, you can see, you can't really see. Um, and so it's really um, the forces which go on where the net internet gets jammed and cell phones um, and loss of communication is where those things go on, like in Gaza, where people could walk across a border, for instance, and suddenly your phone's working. It's like, yeah, right. I mean, that's being jammed, and only some people can really do that, not everybody. Um, and to embroil all in a world um, that everybody could see a bit of a theatre of operation going on, like uh, drone attacks going on where nuclear waste storage is. I mean, currency held hostage really is where the Ukraine has carried the baby, which is a dirty bomb, and then um, nuclear, um, like Kizil strikes are on Israel, which is a very old story. Um, and it all happened when um, the uh, currency went to gold and everything was annihilated in that story, wasn't it? And everybody retired to the smart cities in um, Uzbekistan and these places. Um, and so a story is sort of really a, not a good one that could be just really being run, but it's the best story, honest, where we are, you are, where we have a new epoch and we can see that this old world has cleared away, um, and it's really um, no cause of any radioactive event to have to have been, um, to just have been giving people sort of straw man arguments and slippery slope. Um, 
and you've got all the Stutnex virus and things which is designed um, to seek out wherever the control box is or that in any system um, and make it look like, hey, man, it's a really good looking on the face of everything and yet as the operation looks good and normal behind the scene, everything's getting wrecked, um, you know, until it's uh, uh, been detected, you see, too late. But it's um, if we don't really... Uh, no, that like in Peru and other places, if you go ahead and have a look into all the federal buildings, how come it's not told you that 80% of them are all empty? And we imagine that something is going on where it's not, but the empty um, real estate, the real estate is you and I. That's the sacred cow. This is of an unlimited worth versus a piece of furniture, a bit of gold or a building that is not the real estate that's of unlimited worth, that you and I are, you know, our BC bonds all traded out and credit somebody got like a, a parent superior lien over your your straw man in the nation and then they've just been using your bond to be able to create currencies for themselves. And it's really a Ponzi scheme wrong under negative inductance and so, you know, this fourth estate really is the resource state and everybody's able to visit where we are and we can be looking at things to be able to discharge things, you know. Yeah. And this is what whole brain functioning is, really, you know. You're building a resource state up that's large enough and then you're collapsing and you're stuck state into that resource state, basically, as a synesthesia. because I saw that a new covenant would be over the earth and this new covenant involves language. I saw as a young boy that language was very important and that every single word we use has a physiology um, itself and that I could I could see and sense what someone's uh, motives were deeper inside because I could hear and feel and read their presuppositions um, and by what's not said, that's what a presupposition is. And I, I always was only under the impression that something was a man. Um, and I lived in the wilderness. I never knew anyone. I never spoke to anyone. These were just only perception that I had. And um, when I was 14, suddenly I, would, I saw more people in one day than I'd ever seen my whole life. And um, whatever paradigms that I had inside was just smashed. Just so contrasted, it was radical. I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that this existed because um, I could hear and see and feel people were not acting necessarily uh, ethical. Yes, yeah, certainly not. Um, and that was, I think, a huge, 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 uh, I don't know, I couldn't believe that it existed. I didn't even know it had. Matter of fact, I was completely blind to the world not having known anything ever about anything in the world, matter of fact, and all of a sudden I was thrust into something and I just saw everything in an instant, matter of fact. Um, and um, I had a great grounding in nature growing up in the wilderness um, and I really didn't say anything to anybody and I really didn't hear anybody say anything much. <laughs> um, so nothing really was. It was just a big, huge void um, and no education, uh, just an integration with nature um, and a realisation that every single word you use has a physiology and it's better that somebody would be focused on this being more resourceful. But later on I would learn, as I did uh, do the research, I saw um, that 
um, as you are more moving in a direction toward and forward, which is you being associated in life using direction this way rather than being away from and outside, um, which is dissociated, um, somebody's more in a whole brain function state. And so I did my research into this um, area. Yes, but it all begins because it's just me thinking a new covenant will come to be over the earth. This new covenant involves language. Um, and I saw that a language like, which today, like what we've talked about, the word title, meaning man, woman, if that's in a, in a document, good. If a, there's a real verb there like is, okay, great. Just look for where is is. Don't even bother looking at any other verb much. Um, and uh, if uh, any word you use in any language has got two consonants after a vowel, it's a fictional word. So words could be real or words could be very fictional, you see. Uh, where you put something into singular tense, you can have the word, a real verb, is, but otherwise you can't bring in the present tense, you see. Um, and so every word we use, it anticipates what would have come before it. So some sounds even like D is a sound which is about something that came before it as a word. I mean, these are all to do more with a phonetics and the study of phonetic meaning sound as language. So these are areas which I did, um, you know, um, 19 years of investigation at a, at a postgraduate level. Yeah, so I've like maybe 53,000 hours of research in this area, yeah. So it's just my expertise. It comes to be more my expertise, yeah. you said, I'm not really angry, right, um, the kids are going to know that's angry, yes? But once they go to school, they hear, when you say, I'm not angry, oh, well, that means you're not angry, and it's sort of, um, they're no longer um, connected to the primary level of experience, yeah. Other things that go on at school is where it was very boring what was learned, and life wasn't very good at home. Um, then people will not do well at school at all. They can't. And so um, what happens is those are kids who leave me for the last moment, then they all their learning comes under stress um, and their memory retrieval all then becomes state-specific with anxiety. And so uh, later on in life as an adult, you'll hear those people, their preferred mode of sorting information, Jay, is to have polarised. And so, granted, they could sort all information through polarisation, though it's very limited, extremely, that's all. And if someone, for instance, had a lot of don't, won't, can't, should, try, but, must, only, never, always, let's say, which is exclusive, not inclusive. So all through life, people, with anybody, if they use inclusive words, they're going to be more in whole brain patterning. If they only ever use exclusive words, um, then you know it's excluding and it's separating. And to describe everything around themselves would be very bad, matter of fact. But you've got two other choices, um, you know, in math. So one, of course, is absolute math, just polarization of sorting for what didn't fit, what's obscure. Um, what's not versus, uh, you know, what, what fits, what's resourceful, what's positive, what makes sense. Okay. Um, and you and I, we're, we could be focused on what makes sense. It's just that 
when we're sort of looking at anything, you're looking at something from kind of basically what makes sense versus you're looking at things from what doesn't make sense. It's a polarisation. Um, uh, another very poor type of processing similar um, is another type of preferred mode of sorting information where people are stuck or dissociated. You know, they're not present in life. Um, where they could be more present by looking at these patterns and getting pattern recognition. Um, and the other one would be just going over stuff, you know, and they can't exit. Um, and so they could go, go over something and over, <laughs> and they can't exit from that. Now, it might seem, but a lot of people suffer. Yes, they do. They cannot turn stuff off. And they're very obsessive, compulsive, but you can. It's that somebody just thought they couldn't, they had a belief they couldn't, it's like, oh, please, no. you can, of course you can, you do. It's just activating this, you're getting sticky factors for things. But um, uh, uh, where somebody won't exit from something, that is a mode of sorting information, isn't it? So first we've got a polarisation there, which is is horrific, and it's not going to get you into the frontal cortex, nor, nor your listeners or anybody else either. Um, let's see. And then you've got sort of stuff where you can see it on the side. People get booed off because they're oh, my God, this is going over something. Jesus, it's really bad. Um, so that's called meta-responding. And the only other response that you have, which which your program is more about, where your speech is more about, where you're, you conduct your, everything you do is more congruent, it means it's more parallel. You've got more parallel type of processing instead of not being able to exit or polarizing, which is the other two. So you've got this third mode more where you could be remain more congruent and it's really more like a parallel process. And so it doesn't mean that two people who are perfectly dissociated can be congruently dissociated with each other versus one person dissociated and the other and is incongruent with the other person. Congruency is a word that's just really used for parallel processing because obviously with genius is you've got your parallel processing going on. Um, associatedness really relates more to just your being in the present tense more. Um, and uh, so it's not was or would or shall, which is all maybe a future or past, but but is, is more present and as a verb. Um, and then you're using more real nouns like um, you, you know, a man, a woman, a Sally, Ralph, or a pronoun, which is really weak, like a uh, people, for instance, you know, a people, or um, is, is, uh, is a pronoun, because it, it, it can't be defined. So a noun, really, a real noun is something that can be defined. And so you really learn to use things which could be more defined Legal, uh, lawful documents really are supposed to have, you know, all of it adds up. So this is the JC quanta. In a future, you can only have documents which add up uh, because you've got smart contract, which is governing everything because you've got decentralized governance, you know, yeah, overall, which the world moves to because yeah, you, you can't have centralized government. That's ridiculous. It doesn't model anything in nature, mate. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> You see? Ha! And then, you know, words that will come along is more about quorum sensing in the system. You've got quorum sensing in the system. Yeah. And so it's really more a flow. You can tell and feel it because it's sort of more slurred or it's slightly rolled more versus uh, something else which which is opposite with that is really, which, which, which isn't sort of flowing, but more... Uh, abrupt and more clipped and chopped and flicked. And so it's sort of um, an example would be like language like this that you are going to do this now. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a pretty good example of clipped language. Yeah. So all of us, we can get a feeling of all that and it's all being portrayed. 90% of anything anybody's actually communicating is more through analog, it's not the dialogue at all, but the choice of the words, the way they're said, and things just like that. Yeah.
I've told people the only story where this is is in the uh, um, it, 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 with the Mahomedians in their text because their text was written last. But all these texts were all doctored up and uh, propagandized to be able to have your revelations and have it all coordinated and what have you, you know. Um, and Christians everywhere were taught our, our little homeland is somewhere far away um, in some story um, and that you, you have to protect this. And 2.5 billion Christians, for instance, just were brainwashed by um, you know, a, 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 the Scrocroft Bible, which people could just look into all this. I mean, you know, um, people need to rise above uh, their sectarianism and look at their unit, unity consciousness more where we are in life. But uh, <clears throat> we have a relationship with trees um, are we, and shade. And what happens when we um, value in the art of the way you're living your life by what you're purchasing, you're pulling something out of your pocket, but it's really you're giving it to something. And that is the demand. So it's not. Oh, these people do the wrong thing. It's like, no, no, no. Somebody has created that demand, you see. <clears throat> um, but when we all sit back and we could see something, um, we could see first we're plant based. Um, <clears throat> and the uh, <clears throat> most surfactant inside ourselves is acetyl acid, which is like hydrate, vitamin L. And, um, and that's something which I saw back in 1978. And I saw that. That's a fact that if it's protected, you've got great immunity from a lot of things. If you don't have that proper protection, you know, there's three elements that you're supposed to have in your blood. And when you have that, you know, you've got protection. We, we all move back towards plant-based material because that's the surfactant that we have inside our body. I mean, when people consume animal and stuff, it's it's a horror. Um, they've brought in a molecule of death. That's prion material. And sialic, sialysis is an inflammation of the uh, silica-based elements that's inside the nucleus of your cell. And that's neoplasm. That's diabetes. That's arthritis. That's, uh, you know, growths and things. Yeah, it's all just one thing where somebody can keep their surfactant and we're more plant-based, absolute. So you can't eat insects. There's nothing in our body that can break n glyconeuraminic acid down, which comes from animals. You see, you and I, we don't have any DNA in our body completely at all to break insects down from an animal, basically, especially flesh birds. Yeah. So we all become more plant-based. And what happens then? Now water is used properly. Yes, it is. Because if you just get a pound of flesh, somebody uh, chowed that down, you know, because they're into cliffhangers um, and uh, steaks. Um, one pound of flesh took 5,414 gallons of water because all that water had to go on the crops and then grow to the livestock. That's an absolute incorrect use of water. It's radical. It's not, not minor. Quite well, because... Everything else in science that's plant based, like tomatoes take 22 gallons of water, grapes take 70 gallons of water, everything falls in between those benchmarks. It's crazy if people eat flesh. There's no sustainable future whatsoever. Plus, it's not ethical, it's really painful for the animals and life. And we recommend people stop that straight away. Because it's not, you know, it's just like what we're talking about is more unity conscious, and these people are vegetarian. And they live the longest life. So we have a relation with plants, and uh, we should enjoy various things where something is, though we should, um, like, it's very needy where someone is where they could feel. And experiences, but a shaman is more someone that's living and ongoing and can give you things which is more to do with your ongoing meditation because a meditation isn't just an event itself. You know, it isn't an experience, a memory. Um, it's ongoing that you can trigger um, and have a flag that you raise, sticky factor for, for knowing what to do where you are and being better at it, you know. Like when we we started to talk about uh, 
it's a whole part of the pro- uh, program that was to do with um, being resourceful and being adequate and feeling having a capacity versus feeling inadequate because somebody only had ever programmed um, rejection and they hadn't got a really good program in there for managing rejection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> passes to the Taurus um, and um, and we're in, in, in uh, the Orion arm our our galaxy our, in our galaxy and our solar system is in an arm of a galaxy called the Orion arm and all things flow through a set of stars which is the, the Taurus and Taurine is that exact shape in the brain so it it modifies magnetic energy on such a large scale, but it affects everything on a very, very minute scale. And taurine and these molecules you find in trees, um, and we have a great relationship to that, um, to have molecules which assist to help act as antioxidants. And uh, what do people do today? I mean, they're not really uh, consuming things that's like fruit. Um, which which a nut is a fruit, isn't it? A seed also is a fruit, isn't it? That's right. A broccoli is a fruit in botany, isn't it? Why? Why is a cauliflower a fruit or a cucumber a fruit? All these, like a Brazil nut is a fruit and seeds are fruit because our bodies have come from a flower. Now, you and I, we're more frugivore in our diet and our digestive tract, and we're meant to only eat once a day, not eat all through the day. That's ridiculous. So how much resource is just wasted from ridiculousness that can be saved so easy? We do not have any overpopulation. That's ridiculous. That's a stupid wrong reason come from somebody who has never looked at properly nutrition itself. Yeah. Mm. So we really have a relation with trees, and when we do that, we're going to create shade, and when we create shade, you're going to cause water to come to the surface of the earth again. Where you cut trees down, is water going to come to the surface again? No. So that's wrong, see? It's, yeah. We've got to move toward having a relation with trees. We've got to move toward having a relationship with government. We've got to have things and put forward things which protect people in government, protect their family, protect people, and protect people everywhere. We're the people. That's the fourth estate. And when it hasn't been active, are people in government protected? No. Are people, we the people protected? No. Everything is weaponized. It's really bad. It's wrong. You see, needs to be corrected straight away. You need to form a movement like the Eclipse Movement is, where people can go to jumpdavid.com and they can learn a little bit more. Yes, because in this world we've heard this is this is reality. Um, another world could have been um, which wasn't just as you woke up, you were asleep, and this was there. This is awareness. Awareness is above uh, deep sleep as a state of mind. Awareness is above dreaming, and awareness is above wakefulness. Wakefulness is itself, like where somebody woke up, they slowly maybe, maybe they didn't wake up completely to be woken. Um, they went to awake to be woken, and maybe they were only woken for a moment that were at the wake. But um, awareness is above being aw- awoken, you see. Awoken or a state of consciousness is only seven plus or minus two chunks of information in one period of time and extremely limited as a result. And so one polarizes their own first attention by putting everything into a a negativity. I mean, it's an easy way to drop everything. And so that you slowly have dropped everything because you put things in negative terms. Um, And then what you're left with 
is bliss because finally there's no need anymore because you've got rid of all the need. I mean, so pain also you've got rid of. So where most people just only been swimming between the bank of pleasure and fear um, and getting stuck on either side versus flowing with the river more, you know, um, and not getting stuck on those banks. And this is more your eye-aware state. One could learn more about this. Um, that's a lot of what this work is very much about, and it's very much about this new epoch. And this work more is epochal um, and certainly should be put into uh, Spanish and uh, put into Portuguese, put into uh, Chinese, put into Russian and uh, Swahili, put into other languages, yeah. Love you, Jay. Yeah, you're you're such an angel, and all people that connect in with you, um, and uh, people who are who are great students of what this work is, they're the ones that actually really should be connected with. Um, and I think that um, you, you, you could be really doing some really good shows. We could be doing some good shows together. Anyway, I love you, mate, and we'll catch up to each other in another show. Yeah. Love you, mate. All right, everyone. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that conversation. Uh, it was really a, a pleasure and honor for me uh, to have Dr. Jeb on. Uh, he was really one of the first guests that I I, I wanted to have on this podcast, um, but we had kind of uh, lost contact for a while, and it, it was kind of a, an interesting and serendipitous chain of events um, that we got back in contact, and we were able to, to find time and space. Uh, we're, we're both quite busy. Um, and hopefully, uh, if you all enjoy this, uh, I would love to have him back on again and, and go into some topics. I mean, he, he really is a wealth of information. Um, so again, I hope you enjoyed that. As always, if you're able to support this podcast, that's a really big help to me. Patreon is a really good option. It's a website. You can uh, sign up and subscribe for as little as a dollar a month. There's different tiers you can sign up for. Those tiers give you different things back, things like early access to shows, bonus material, Q&As. To all the patrons, as always, thank you very much for your support. Um, I, I really appreciate it. It's what allows me to continue uh, making this podcast. Uh, and if you're able to do that, thank you very much in advance. Um, it's really Really built on this idea of reciprocity. So if you feel like you're gaining something from this podcast, it allows you to give back and also to receive uh, some extra things as well. Um, if you're not able to do that, as always, helping with the algorithms is a really big help. So if you're viewing this on YouTube or Rumble, um, subscribing to the, the channel, um, turning on the notification bell, liking the video, leaving any questions or comments in the comment section, and then with the audio version with Apple Podcasts and Spotify, subscribing, following to the show, uh, leaving a starred review, and also an Apple Podcast if you're able to leave a short um, rating and review, that's also really beneficial. Uh, so I think that's it. Again, I, I hope you all enjoyed this podcast. Uh, it was it was really an honor for me to have Dr. Jeb on. Um, I hope to uh, have continue to bring on some really interesting guests. I think my next episode is going to be an interview that I was interviewed on, uh, where I really talked a lot more in depth about tobacco uh, as a medicine, as a plant medicine. Um, I did another episode with tobacco. I think it was episode maybe four, if I remember correctly. Um, but this is really going into some more detail. So I, I think I'm going to release that as, a, uh, I think that first episode was called Sacred Tobacco. So this will be Sacred Tobacco probably part two. Um, I have a really interesting woman coming on named Leela Lieberman, who was recommended to me by a, a friend and student of ours. Um, she's a really fascinating woman. I had a chance to listen to a few of her talks. Um, she works a lot with plant medicine. Um, she works a lot with trees and the teachings of trees, so very similar to the, the work that I do. So that should be a really fascinating conversation. Uh, hopefully a local Cardo guy named Victor will come on. I'm trying to arrange that. Um, a woman named Kat Courtney, who has an um, excellent um, uh, website, Instagram channel, and she does work, and I believe it's called Plant Medicine People. Uh, she should be coming on. Um, and there's a few other guests I have uh, lined up as well, um, but I'm still trying to, to get the dates set up. Um, and when I do, I will let you all know. So I hope this finds you all well. Again, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you all for the support, and I will see you all on the next episode.